Foundation Stones to Happiness and Success by James Allen Chapter 2 Sound Methods From the five foregoing right principles, when they are truly apprehended and practiced, will issue sound methods. Right principles are manifested in harmonious action, and method is to life what law is to the universe. Everywhere in the universe there is the harmonious adjustment of parts, and it is this symmetry and harmony that reveals a cosmos as distinguished from chaos. So in human life, the difference between a true life and a false life, between one purposeful and effective and one purposeless and weak, is one of method. The false life is an incoherent jumble of thoughts, passions and actions. The true life is an orderly adjustment of all its parts. It is all the difference between a mass of lumber and a smoothly working, efficient machine. A piece of machinery in perfect working order is not only useful, but an admirable and attractive thing. But when its parts are all out of gear and refuse to be readjusted, its usefulness and attractiveness are gone and it is thrown on the scrap heap. Likewise, a life perfectly adjusted in all its parts, so as to achieve the highest point of efficiency, is not only a powerful life, but an excellent and beautiful thing, whereas a life confused, inconsistent, discordant, is a deplorable exhibition of wasted energy. If a life is to be truly lived, method must enter into and regulate every detail of it, as it enters and regulates every detail of the wondrous universe of which we form a part. One of the most distinguishing differences between a wise man and a foolish man is that the wise man pays careful attention to the smallest things, while the foolish man slurs over them or neglects them altogether. Wisdom consists in maintaining things on their right relations, in keeping all things, the smallest as well as the greatest, in their proper places and times. To violate order is to produce confusion and discord, and unhappiness is but another name for discord. The good businessman knows that system is three parts of success, and that disorder means failure. The wise man knows that disciplined, methodical living is three parts of happiness, and that looseness means misery. What is a fool but one who thinks carelessly, acts rashly, and lives loosely? What is a wise man but one who thinks carefully, acts calmly, and lives consistently? The true method does not end with the orderly arrangement of the material things and external relations of life. This is but its beginning. It enters into the adjustment of the mind, the discipline of the passions, the elimination and choice of words and speech, the logical arrangement of the thoughts, and the selection of right actions. To achieve a life rendered sound, successful, and sweet by the pursuance of sound methods, one must begin not by neglect of the little everyday things, but by assiduous attention to them. Thus the hour of rising is important, and it's regularly significant, as are also the timing of retiring to rest, and the number of hours given to sleep. Between the regularity and irregularity of meals, and the care and carelessness in which they are eaten, is all the difference between good and bad digestion, with all that this applies, and an irritable or comfortable frame of mind, with its train of good or bad consequences. For attaching to these meal times and meal ways are matters of both physiological and psychological significance. The due division of hours for business and for play, not confusing the two, the orderly fitting in of all the details of one's business, times for solitude, for silent thought and for effective action, for eating and for abstinence. All these things must have their lawful place in the life of whom whose daily round is to proceed with the minimum degree of friction, who is to get the most usefulness, influence, and joy out of life. But all this is but the beginning of that comprehensive method which embraces the whole life and being. When this smooth order and logical consistency is extended to the words and actions, to the thoughts and desires, then wisdom emerges from folly, 
and out of weakness comes power sublime. When a man so orders his mind as to produce a beautiful working harmony between all its parts, then he reaches the highest wisdom, the highest efficiency, the highest happiness. But this is the end, and he who would reach the end must begin at the beginning. He must systematize and render logical and smooth the smallest details of his life, proceeding step by step toward the finished accomplishment. But each step will yield its own particular measure of strength and gladness. To sum it up, method produces that smoothness which goes with strength and efficiency. Discipline is method applied to the mind. It produces that calmness which goes with power and happiness. Method is working by rule. Discipline is living by rule. But working and living are not separate. They are but two aspects of character, of life. Therefore, be orderly in work. Be accurate in speech. Be logical in thought. Between these and slovenliness, inaccuracy and confusion, is the difference between success and failure, music and discord, happiness and misery. The adoption of sound methods of working, acting, thinking, in a word, of living, is the surest and safest foundation for sound health, sound success, sound peace of mind. The foundation of unsound methods will be found to be unstable, and to yield fear and unrest even when it appears to succeed, and when its time of failure comes, it is grievous indeed.